good morning, everyone. I am going to give people about a couple more minutes to log on as I see people are still joining. Um, so just a couple more minutes and we'll get started. The conference has been muted. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this July series or July edition of our 2017 webinar series. My name is Maria Cuevas, and I am the Senior Business Development Manager for NIC Services. I am part of the business development team here that also includes Jenna Coates and Michelle O'Reilly, and Mukesh Patel is our president. Um, you will and have heard all of our voices, um, both or myself, Jenna, and Michelle throughout the webinars, and you will continue to hear all of us uh, throughout the year. So this is the start of our quarter three edition of our webinar series, and we are going to be focusing on security this quarter. So today we are talking about security, and we're going to break down the hard stuff. And what that really means, or what our goal is, is to give very simple, high-level um, answers and explanations to some frequently asked questions that we are hearing in going out and implementing payment processes and systems, and that we are also hearing that um, agency clerks are getting when people are making transactions at their counter. So we just kind of want to touch on those things today and, and go over ways to very simply talk about a topic that isn't so simple. So what we did to uh, meld this webinar today is come up with some questions or some frequently asked questions and then provide answers to those questions um, and again just we're trying to put easy ways to talk about security. So the first question we came up with is what is PCI compliance? Most people actually are familiar with the acronym PCI and they just know that it has something to do with credit cards and something to do with security um, but they're not really sure what it is. So we're just going to touch on that and then how the PCI levels are also related to, to that compliance. Um, probably the most frequently asked question is, well, what happens to my information? Um, people get up to the counter and, and want to make a payment and hand over the credit card and they just start thinking, huh, I wonder what happens to my information. So we're going to talk about um, the encryption of customer data and how to explain that to your customer or your citizen user. And then, of course, EMV. We have probably touched on EMV in every single one of our webinars so far this year, and we will probably touch on it in all of the rest throughout the rest of the year. This, this is a hot topic, um, and it's also another one of those questions that uh, citizen users are coming to mind when they hand that credit card over or if they have to insert it. Uh, with the implementation of a lot of the EMV devices throughout government agencies, Customers or citizens are starting to take notice that if government agencies are now using EMB, well, well, well what is this? And, and is it really more secure? So, so we're going to touch on that a little bit. And then we're going to move on to market updates. And this month, we're going to talk about payment trends. 
some predictions for 2017 and if those are kind of ringing true now that we're halfway through the year and how they are related to security as well. If you have any questions throughout the presentation and you don't want to lose track of them, please feel free to send it in the chat um, option of ReadyTalk and I'll address them at the end or you can hold on to them and we will open it up for questions at the end. I don't intend to take up um, the entire hour. It'll probably last about 30 minutes. Uh, so we'll have plenty of time for questions or else you guys will get a little bit of your day back. So what is PCI compliance? PCI is a set of standards. That is the very simple, straightforward definition. The payment card industry data security standard. Um, again, it is a set of standards that any organization, any merchant that is accepting credit card transactions has to adhere to. So again, a very simple definition um, to what is PCI. The question that generally follows, what is PCI compliance, is, well, well what are the PCI levels? People will often um, say, well, they know there's like level one through four, and why would any merchant choose to be level four if there's a level one? And the levels, as you see here, actually relates to the amount of transactions that that merchant is processing. So as you see, as the transaction count increases, the validation level increases. And it's over a 12-month period because PCI, there are PCI audits every single year. Um, and as you see there, as I noted, and NIC is a level one service provider. And we just received our signed PCI attestation um, of compliance just this month for 2016. So it is something that is monitored. It is audited. Um, and a way, if any merchant has had an infraction in previous years, they can be asked to adhere to a higher level of of, of validation. So that is about that is the way that those levels work and how they relate to PCI uh, compliance in regards to credit card processing. Here's that most commonly asked question. What happens to my customer information? So what we have done here is just put together a very simple diagram about the most common uh, transaction flow. That customer comes into the government agency, uh, walks up to the clerk and needs to pay their fee or fine um, or make their purchase, and they hand their credit card over. And this is, this is, like I said before, generally when that little light bulb goes off and they're like, huh, well, what happens to my information? So the clerk swipes it through the machine, and at that point, that information is encrypted. Um, and you'll see there is a little note that it's with a 2048-bit key. Now, what that means, or the easiest way to explain that is in, that, in the customer data that is on that card, it has a certain number of characters. Um, and then that, those characters are then encrypted with an additional 2,048 characters, making that information not recognizable. That information then is held for the shortest amount of time required to complete that transaction. And once that transaction is complete, uh, you see my little poof cloud down there, that data is no longer stored. Um, the system continues to process and the receipt has been given to the customer, um, but that data will no longer be stored once that transaction is complete. Now, like I said, this is the most simple transaction flow, um, and it is the easiest way to discuss and talk about customer data and the encryption of customer data. But do know that there are other, there are other forms and other, other levels of encryption. Um, so for example, if that customer data had to be stored for maybe the purposes of recurring payments, uh, that data is then further encrypted, um, gone through another algorithm, and then also encrypted with additional um, bit keys. This is also where we are seeing um, the need or the interest in tokenization to where, as opposed to encryption with additional um, characters or bit keys, that customer data is actually transformed into an unrecognizable form called a token, and that token is then stored and passed back and forth. So again, trying to give you here, um, as I've reiterated on every slide, and we're only five slides in, 
trying to give you very simple, um, very easy to explain and also understand definitions and answers to simple questions. I'm also trying to that if you are one of those lucky people who is tech-minded and completely understands the in and outs of security, this is also just trying to give you an easier way um, to talk about security to people who aren't quite the same-minded. Same so probably, again, the most, another most frequently asked question is just what is the new EMV chip? And like I said, we've touched on EMV through every webinar. We're going to keep talking about it. Um, it really is a hot topic right now because everyone is getting those debit cards in the mail or those credit cards in the mail to replace their old ones that has a, that has a shiny new chip in it. So what is EMV? It is a fancy name to identify those cards that you are getting with that chip in it. That's that is at the basic level what, what we refer to as EMB. It is new to the United States, but like I said, most people are, most, most banks and credit cards um, are replacing their cards with those chips. And they are doing it because that chip is significantly more difficult to create a mimic of or to create fraudulent cards. And this is why the U.S. is now moving towards this chip, because the benefits of this technology are too significant to overlook. And the benefits of it are a reduction in fraud. And you will see here that in the United States, the U.S. accounts for 25% of the world's payment card transactions, but also accounts for more than 50% of all fraudulent card transactions. And that losses due to card fraud top $10 billion in 2015 and represent $0.10 cents out of every $100 transacted. So you can see that, that fraud is it's something that is relevant. It is why we are moving towards this new technology. And since we have moved towards that new technology since the inception of EMB here in the U.S., uh, the research is showing that counterfeit fraud has been declining, 52% at chip-enabled um, merchants and then 14% across all. So what that is just showing us is that even if those smaller, even those smaller merchants, uh, those smaller government agencies who haven't had the chance yet to shift to an EMV device or EMV system, um, they're still seeing a decrease in fraud because of the larger uh, organizations and larger retailers that are making that shift to EMV. It is just now becoming harder. So I'm going to move on to just talk about some trends of 2017 or some predictions for 2017 and, and if we're seeing that those maybe ring true and then how, how they are related and associated to, to security. So this number one prediction you'll see right here is just the increase um, in data, the increase in analytics of that data. So for many years, large companies have been tracking and analyzing people who come to their site, how many complete transactions, um, and they take that information, they analyze that data, and then they use that to better interact with their customers, to better interact um, with their citizen users. And what, we, what this prediction is saying is that a, the smaller agencies or smaller retailers are now going to see the benefit from that data as well. And I will say that implementing um, payment processing systems in very, very large cities and also very, very small counties, everyone has an interest in that data, and they want to know what it means and how they can use that to better interact, uh, to better interact with people. So being seven months into the year, I will say that this statistic we are seeing on this side ringing true. If anything, people, the interest in that data and what it really means um, for them and their business is definitely on the increase. Prediction number two, back to that EMB, an increase in um, the acceptance of chip cards. This is definitely true. Uh, we are implementing EMB in some of our partners currently, and everyone is asking uh, when, they should, when they should make that transaction. So again, the, the shift in this is due to the added security of the EMB chip the reduction of fraud, and this is a statistic that I would actually say is on the lower side. I would say that more than 32% are actually making that shift 7%, or seven months into the year. Prediction number three, fraudsters shift their focus to mobile payments. So as we have talk, talked about the added security of the EMD chip card, um, the 
PCI standards that merchants have to adhere to. Um, merchants are, are getting up there on the security. They're, they're pushing those fraudsters down. They're making those people work even harder to try and, and mimic cards and try and, and defraud um, people and businesses. So this is where that encryption, that security, all of those standards are going to have to keep up with them. You're going to have to keep up with the fraudsters. And, and this is where we kind of talk about that tokenization uh, implementation starting to be on the rise. So like we talked just a couple slides back, that tokenization just takes that data and makes it unrecognizable, and then is a more secure way to pass it back and forth. And I will say that, that this is something that people are starting to ask, ask about, um, and people are starting to want to know more about. It's hard enough for me to just say the word tokenization, uh, but it is something that we are having to talk a lot more about right now. And prediction number four is payments become seamless. What this prediction um, is talking about is for years, a lot of people wanting, or a lot of agencies, a lot of retailers wanting to accept credit cards within, within their business, uh, within their agency, are having to upload software. They have to um, keep that software maintained by upgrades and updates. And what this is saying is how to make that, those payments more seamless is by providing a cloud-based API. Uh, and what that does is provides a set of instructions to a, a technical person who can then connect to a payment processing system. Um, we here at NIC do offer a cloud-based API, and it is, we are seeing that implementation times are going down. Um, there's just not as much. Um, it's becoming more seamless, just like this prediction is saying. It is becoming more seamless. This is something we are definitely seeing that rings true. A lot of companies um, who were selling payment solutions out of the box are now, are now coming to more of an API-based service. And finally, the fifth prediction is NFC payment SOAR, so near field communication payment. Um, most familiar, what people most associate with this is the Apple Pay. So you'll see I have that little graphic there of the iPhone and Apple Watch um, showing a credit card. And you just walk up to the counter, it's due, and it's supposed to point out your credit card. You just swipe your watch over the machine or pull your phone out and hold it over, and it charges your card as if you were to swipe or insert it. Uh, this, this is becoming more common. Um, and what this prediction is saying is that it is just, this is going to be the year where that source, where more companies are going to have to, um, to uh, account for this type of payment. And EMV machines, the EMV machines that, that we are putting in or implementing with our partners are, are prepared and ready to take their field communication because this is a form of payment uh, that is becoming significantly more popular now. So like I said, and like I promised, I wasn't going to take up a lot of your time. Um, only about 16 minutes, so that's not bad for a Wednesday morning. Um, but I hope that we have reached a goal of just providing a very brief, very simple overview to a topic that is not brief and not simple, um, which is why we will be talking about it for, for the next, for two more months. Uh, we do have another webinar coming up next. Uh, month, August 23rd, and that is where we will dive more into PCI compliance, more into NACHA compliance, which is um, a similar set of standards for e-check or ACH processing, and we'll also talk about the equipment and the compliance uh, associated with that. I don't see any questions right now in my chat box, so I will unmute the line, and if you have any questions, please do speak up, and if not, no worries, my feelings won't be hurt. We will just talk again next month. The conference has been unmuted. So if you do have any questions, feel free to speak up. All right, well, not hearing any, I'm going to give you guys a big chunk of your hour back. I do appreciate you all tuning in. Um, please do follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn and our YouTube page, and you will be able to download and share this webinar with others in your office if you like. So thank you for joining me, and we will talk again next month.